how many of us think about getting old? If and when we do, we probably think about those around us, those who love us, those who will take care of us. But how many of us think about those getting old in prison? Or getting sick in prison? Or even dying in prison? Who takes care of them? One day, uh, a dear friend of mine became sick. And I wanted to uh, spend some time with him. And the only way I could spend that time with him in medical was to join the hospice team. So that's how I got involved in all. My name is Doug Austin. I'm from Norwalk, Connecticut. And I've been doing hospice for about 18 years. And I'm Rob Van Dyson. I'm from upstate New York. And I've been doing hospice for about 15 years. My name is uh, Juan Rios. Uh, I've been doing the hospice program for about seven years now. So my name is Matthew Roy. Um, recently been promoted to clinical supervisor here at ISCI, taking care of residents in general population. In the United States and abroad, prisons are implementing hospice programs to care for the aging and those dying while incarcerated. Hospice Care at the Idaho State Correctional Institution is a volunteer-driven program that provides end-of-life care that would not be possible using available health care staff alone. So when I first joined the department, I heard about hospice and I was just amazed and really, um, you know, hoping to jump head first, uh, but I was still pretty new. And so actually, um, it kind of got put on the back burner and then gained a little bit more experience, a little bit more knowledge and policies and processes and how things are here. And was then formally asked to, to be that point of contact to take, take over the helm of that. Um, so yeah, really, really from, from the beginning, from when I heard about it, I, I just thought it was really um, a very admirable thing that was happening and something I wanted to be a part of. Participation in hospice has the potential to significantly benefit the lives of volunteers, as they may see their work as a way to bring value to their own lives. I got involved with a good friend of mine, Johnny Darby, God rest his soul, um, came down with uh, brain cancer. So, um, you know, I, Johnny and I were really tight. We are really good friends. I've known him for a, a number of years, and I wanted to spend the last amount of time with him that I could. So I was almost with Johnny like every single moment, you know, every every hour of the day. And and uh, Johnny was good people, man. I mean, uh, I remember one time that Bro was uh, starting to feel a little better and decided he wanted to throw a spread for all of us. And we invited all the hospice guys down there, and we just had a big old spread with music. And we just threw a party, just a party. And uh, after that, that's when uh, John went downhill. You know, and I spent as much time as I could with him, you know, hanging out with him and talking about Florida, that's where he was from, and uh, making sure he got his phone calls in and letters written and everything else. And then uh, one day he graced me with the most wonderful gift of all, and that uh, he felt comfortable enough and that he can go home. And I was right there with him and spent my last moments with him. And it was tough. It was a tough time, you know, because like I said, I mean, he was family to me in here, you know. And uh, when he passed, it really hit me hard. When I first started doing this, I'm not going to lie, it, it wasn't because I was looking for something to do or somebody to help. I am doing life without parole. That is a very, very good actually a very real possibility. So I was curious. I wanted to see what I might have to look forward to. But like I said along the way, <laughs> you, you, 
I don't care who you are. When you do this, whatever your reasons for doing this, you're going to have some sort of profound effect in your life. It's going to have a profound um, and so far that I've been doing this, I haven't found that it, it had any bad effect on anybody's life. Everybody and anybody that I've known has done this has been better for it, whether they intended to, to go that way or not. Um, I started doing it because I was just curious. Um, after my first couple, like I said, I tried to hide it because, you know, it was just like, damn, that's what I got to look forward to. But that's not, that wasn't what I learned later. That wasn't the point. And that's not, um, that's not where my road ended up leading. It ended up leading for service, you know. Uh, regardless of who you are, what you've been here for, no one, no one should ever have to die alone. And, and knowing that I can be a part of that for somebody else, it, it's been an honor. You know, I, I don't really know the why. It, it, it felt like the right thing to do. Um, it felt like um, I've, I've always been somewhat of a selfish person and uh, I was at a point in my life there where um, I wanted to I wanted to be more involved in other people's lives and other people's situations and conditions So I think that's probably the biggest, the, the first thing is just the, 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 the diversity in terms of where people are coming from. Um, there's diversity in age. Um, one of our volunteers has been working with hospice, I think right around 20 years. And so many of the residents who are on hospice, this person is very familiar with them. This person has known them for decades. Um, and then there's also younger people who maybe don't really have personal connections with um, the people they're sitting with. But, but again, there's that human connection of this person has lived an eventful and um, often long life and they're now coming to the end of that and I have an opportunity to accompany them and to, to provide some some comfort. You know, they they have a very um, internal motivation in it. You know, there's a very deep personal significance to doing this work. Whether you're leaving a prison cell and coming out to the community, or you're leaving this world, you shouldn't have to do it alone. The saddest thing, the most terrifying thing for people in prison is the thought that they may die in prison. I felt, I was hell scared, really scared of dying, of being in that situation. Well, <laughs> I'm living proof <laughs> that the population is going older, you know what I'm saying? And then on top of that, um, if that time does come, you know, who's going to be the man that's sitting with me? Because I'm going to ask for it. Um, and in my situation and in what's going on is the fact that, you know, most more and more I'm running into people like the last one or people I know. As much as we say we don't care, we do care. And, and having somebody there is very important for me. As I walk in, the first thing I look at is a number. And I see their number, I go like, yeah, I should know that person. So um, I have recently, in the past five years, I'm gonna say, most of the guys that have been in hospice is the people I've known, you know, that we've kind of, we've been here together. Uh, also, you know, what was going on to that man today? Because the man that I was with, he was up, he was talking, and he didn't know me at all, you know, but we sat there and had conversations and conversations and as fast as he went was was really scary because we're in the middle of eating ice cream together and he just goes he's just gone but it was a good one because we're I mean even though he was gone we were laughing we were talking about the TV and talking about getting more ice cream and uh, um, 
I was scared, and then at the same time, I was like, damn, he's gone just like that. I felt bad for him, you know, because, and then I felt good for him because, I mean, to go laughing and smiling like that, you know, even though it was pretty quick, was, was something that I hope happens to me, you know? It was pretty fast and, and unexpected. Um, but it made being there a whole lot easier. Um, not all passings are the same, and, and maybe uh, a different passing would have had a different effect on me, but that one right there, it really opened my heart and helped my heart to that. And then I just figured I'd stay and kept doing it. So as it goes on, I, I look by the grace of God, go I, from now, um, one of these days, you know, it's kind of like pay it forward kind of thing, you know, maybe I'm doing this, that when my time comes, I'll have somebody like you, for example, a familiar voice sitting beside me, letting me know that everything's going to be okay, that uh, alleviates all the fear, all the doubt, all the, you know, fear of the unknown, whatever else that could be. Because I can't imagine, you know, it's like um, my faith tells me that everything is going to be great. However, until I get to that moment, I don't know how I'll react, you know. So I would want that friend beside me to let me know that everything's going to be okay. It's going to work itself out, you know. The hands that once hurt other people are now used to help, to heal, and to care. Many relationships are transactional, and hospice is just about as far from that as you can get. You know, it is totally compassionate. It is complete empathy. My name is Colin Schmidt, and I <clears throat> I have been uh, a hospice uh, participant for the last three months, about three Probably months or so. Time maybe four. Um, uh, thanks to this man, he's the one that, that asked me to be a part of it, and I, I, uh, I count it also as a blessing um, to be a part uh, of this. To get, it's an opportunity to, to, to be there for somebody else and give back, so it's pretty, pretty amazing. Like I said, when you, when you asked me to be a part of it, I, I thought, okay, he obviously sees something in me that, that I can uh, I can possibly pay it forward for somebody else, so that was that was awesome. That was awesome. You've been around for a minute, so you will get to know some of these guys that we have to sit with. Mm -hmm. So that's also very honorable. And at the same time, it's good to know, and it's actually it gives you a good feeling to know that the person that you're with, as well, knows that you're there and can recognize who you are, even if you're somebody that they don't know. It's still, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It's a comfort. It's a small comfort, but we do our best to give it. Yeah. Very, very, uh, very amazing feeling. It's, um, I guess it puts you in a, in, in a perspective. There's perspective that happens while you're going through it with someone. Um, and it's an amazing feeling to be there with them as they're going. And, and uh, I think, um, it brought me to a place where I'm like going, okay, well, what would I want for myself um, when I reach that point in my life? Would I want somebody to be there? And, and, and uh, absolutely, especially when you're in this place, you want somebody to hold your hand, be there for you, comfort you. And that was, it's an amazing, it's an amazing part of it. There is this sense that prison is the great equalizer. Right, wherever you come from or whatever you have, once you're here, um, there's a lot of uniformity. And I think, in a way, death is a similar um, situation. You know, it can be very lonely, it can be very painful. Um, you know, every experience is unique, obviously. Um, but I think some of those needs are common. You know, whether it's a person who is incarcerated or not incarcerated, a person who has lots of family support or does not have family support, someone who's had a prolonged battle with a health condition or someone whose health has deteriorated rapidly. Um, that common denominator is just the need to be accompanied. You know, that human contact. Um, that was a word that really came out a lot 
as we were speaking with the volunteers, the need for that, that contact, you know, that support, the presence of another human being. A lot of times I wish I could be there to get to speak, know what kind of music they like, what kind of books they like to read, what kind of programs they like to watch, you know, something about them. Um, it's lately, and uh, lately we've been coming in at the very end. You know what I'm saying? When they're unresponsive. So you, you, the best you can do is, you know, you walk in, you let them know you're there, you tell them your name, let them know that you're, you know, touch or whatever else. Uh, they say hearing is the last thing to go. So, you know, you speak as much as you can to let them know that they're not alone. Hospice teaches that death doesn't care about our station in life. Hospice reminds us all that we breathe the same air, whether inside or outside a prison cell. Several of the, the last uh, ones that we were on visual with, I, I knew, so you know, you, you can anticipate how they're going to respond and, and react. finished a vigil not too long ago and it was a totally shocking experience for me really because of the fact that we are so hands-on with them being able to to you know go in be right there be able to hold their hand it, it really moved me to know that this is a program that I want to do but I've had I think five um, that I was there for for the, the terminal and um, and it's 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 a good feeling um, to to be there. It's always sad when you go get the nurse and you say, I "Think he's think he's gone," and then she comes in and and checks and she says, "Yeah, you can go home now." Um, but uh, I I I like the intimacy. The strangest things about the whole hospice experience is it's so humanizing. You know what I'm saying? It's the fact that you have that one-on-one -on -one with a person and it's, there's no barriers. There's no pretend, there's no faking. I mean, you're, you're just real right then and there. Who knew that at the brink of the end, life could begin? I get a sense of, of that that no matter what I've done in my life, that I can still do something worthwhile because it's been it's been a rough stu I'm not gonna say stupid, but it's been a rough um, life of bad choices, and they were all for myself, and in the end, they turned out to be bad for everybody, even myself. So I feel like that I'm actually. It's never too late, I guess you would say. It's never too late. Um, no one's ever passed redemption, and you can always do something for <laughs> You can always do something for yourself and for someone else. Um, I'm not gonna say it's it, it's. I'm not gonna say it's redemption, but it's it's on the way there. You know, I think I don't think that road ever ends. There's always something better somebody can do for themselves and for somebody else, and. There's always growing to do. Um, we're going to stumble across, we're going to str stumble in our path, but for me, that's what it is. Just that no matter all that crap that happened before, I'm doing this now and I can do this in the future. And I guess would be it. Absolutely. I'd have to say the same, about the same thing, going along the same line of, of um, um, that good person that I thought maybe I'd lost along the way, or asked, you know, where where is that person anymore? Um, to realize that I still have that inside me, that I, I'm not defined by my past behaviors. In some instances, I'm not defined by um, labels. That I can be somebody else, that I can do something better. 
that I can always progress, that I can give back, um, that it's, it's not over for me, it's not over for you. Um, I think that's, that's why we do it, yeah. To help out, help somebody else, and help ourselves at the same time, I think. I, I know we're helping too, you know. Um, by the time they're gone, you don't really get much other than those last few moments, but I, I know it helps, and I believe. Amen. So why is prison hospice an idea worth spreading? Because compassion is worth spreading. Hospice is like the soul of the prison, a beacon for people that need to find that well of compassion. Another crucial aspect to, to my profession and the work that we do, every life has value. Any human breathing is incredibly priceless and connected with every other human. It's actually more rewarding than what you would think. Like you help an individual that can't help yourself. And in return, you actually find out that you got compassion. Yeah. You can be as hard as you want, but when you're there, you can be compassionate and it makes you learn more about, mm, more about yourself, really. You take more away from it than you probably think. It's uh, very rewarding. It's very, I, I just want to say that it's it's a program that I didn't think that I was going to get involved in. But being involved in it now, seeing what we do, doing what we do, it's the most rewarding thing I could ever possibly think of in this prison system. You go, okay, well, I know there's a good part of me that wants to give back. You know, I know that, at least for me, I've, you know, I have these ideas or thoughts of, oh, well, you know, when I get out, I'm going to go do this. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to volunteer at the soup kitchen or, or, you know, go down to the homeless shelter and give out some clothes or, or do whatever I can, some food or things of that nature. And um, you get out there and you get busy and you don't end up doing any of that kind of thing. And uh, again, I think it's a blessing and a uh, to be in a position to be able to give of myself because I do have the time to do that, to give of myself to somebody else. Oh, it's, it's, it's tremendous. You know, it's, again, it's an inspiration to me to, of how I want to live my life. And, um, you know, just, just a very present reminder of the way things should be. And I shy away from using that word, but I think in this context, absolutely. Um, you know, this is this is heavy stuff. People people coming to the end of their lives. That's 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 tough. Um, that's a big thing, particularly if you knew the person, you know, or you had some connection with them. Um, and so to voluntarily involve you know involve yourself with that. Um, week after week, you know, on an ongoing basis. It's, it's very significant. Ending well should not be dependent on living well, nor should it be premised on living a model life. Certainly at the gates of freedom, for those who pass away in prison, we can send them off with at least a glimpse of what is best about humanity, compassion, 
empathy, love, redemption. Proof that we value the dignity of life, every life. Hospice is a great, rewarding thing. You know, one of the things that I've always did, I always figured out, especially later on as I, I got involved, more and more involved in hospice and some of the other things that, are, that happened on the yard, that for me, when I was out there in the real, in the streets and everything else, I never was really involved with my community. You know, I never was. I was outside, I was running amok, I was doing all this stuff. But as I get older and as I came in here, I started becoming more involved in this community. Now, of course, this is not home, but it's the practice, the act of being involved that br makes, brings the humanity out of people. You know what I'm saying? So when it comes to hospice, yeah, it is the scary prospect to sit through. You know, when I talk to guys about being part of hospice, well, I don't know if I could sit with somebody that's dying, you know? Um, but there is no greater love than to give yourself to another person, a very, especially at the very end of life, to give them the support and the comfort they need. If you're able to do that, then you're able to do that anywhere you go. So hospice is almost like a training ground for, you, for humanity for the human side of all of us. Treasure buried deeper with each loss. So filled with grief and catastrophic thoughts Insecurity, distorted flaws It all gets heavy, sinking under all the cause Sure that I'm not sure, I know when I don't know Carries the wind, drowns out the rain, but will it make sense without the pain?